सी आई ई टी एन सी ई आर टी प्रेजेंट द ऑडियो बुक गणित प्रकाश टेक्स्ट बुक ऑफ मैथमेटिक्स फॉर क्लास सिक्स चैप्टर नंबर फोर डेटा हैंडलिंग एंड प्रेजेंटेशन पेज नंबर सेवेंटी फोर इफ यू आस्क योर क्लासमेट्स अबाउट देर फेवरेट कलर्स यू विल गेट अ लिस्ट ऑफ कलर्स दिस लिस्ट इज एन एग्जाम्पल ऑफ डेटा सिमिलरली इफ यू मेजर द वेट ऑफ ईच स्टूडेंट इन योर क्लास you would get a collection of measures of weight again data any collection of facts numbers measures observations or other descriptions of things that convey information about those things is called data we live in a age of information we constantly see large amounts of data presented to us in new and interesting ways in this chapter we will explore some of the ways that data is presented and how we can use some of those ways to correctly display interpret and make inferences from such data 4.1 collecting and organizing data navya and naresh are discussing their favorite games You can find the dialogues between Navya and Naresh on this page. Navya says cricket is my favorite game. Naresh says I play cricket sometimes but hockey is the game I like most. Navya says I think cricket is the most popular game in our class. Naresh says I am not sure. How can we find the most popular game in our class page number 75 another child says to figure out the most popular game in their class what should navya and naresh do can you help them naresh and navya decided to go to each student in the class and ask what their favorite game is then they prepared a list Navya is displaying the list here which describes name of the student and his or her favorite game. She says happily, I have collected the data. I can figure out the most popular game now. A few other children are going through the list and wondering. We can't yet find the most popular game. How can we get it? from this list figure it out question number 1 what would you do to find the most popular game among naresh and navya's classmates question number 2 what is the most popular game in their class question number 3 try to find out the most popular game among their classmates question number 4 Pari wants to respond to the questions given here. Put a tick mark for the questions where she needs to carry out data collection and put a cross for the questions where she doesn't need to collect data. Page number 76. Discuss your answers in the classroom. Part A. What is the most popular TV show among her classmates? part b when did india get independence part c how much water is getting wasted in her locality part d what is the capital of india shri nilesh is a teacher he decided to bring sweets to the class to celebrate the new year the sweets shop nearby has jalebi gulab jamun gunjia barfi and rasgulla he wanted to know the choices of the children he wrote the names of the sweets on the board and asked each child to tell him their preference he put a tally mark for each student and when the count reached 5 he put a line through the previous four and marked it as four tally marks crossed by another slant line 
Here you will find a picture which is given. It represents three columns. First column represents sweets. Second column represents tally marks. And the third column represents the number of students. In the sweets column, you find jalebi with tally marks of bundle 5 and 1 that is showing 6. In gulab jamun, there is a bundle of 5 and 4 which adds up to 9. Similarly, for gunjia, there are 2 bundles of tally marks showing 5 plus 5 plus 3 more. For barfi, there are 3 tally marks. For rasgulla, there is a bundle of 5 tally marks plus 2. Figure it out. Question number 1. Complete the table to help Srinilesh to purchase the correct number of sweets. Part A. How many students chose Jalebi? Part B. Barfi was chosen by dash number of students. Part C. How many students chose Gunjia? Part D. Rasgulla was chosen by dash number of students. Part E. How many students chose Gulab Jamun? Page number 77. Nilesh requested one of the staff members to bring the sweets as given in the table. The above table helped him to purchase the correct numbers of sweets. Question number 2. Is the given table sufficient to distribute each type of sweet to the correct student? Explain. If it is not sufficient, what is the alternative? To organize the data, we can write the name of each sweet in one column and using tally marks, note the number of students who prefer that sweet. The numbers 6, 9, etc. are the frequencies of the sweet preferences for jalebi, gulab jamun, etc. respectively. Sushri Sandhya asked her students about the sizes of the shoes they wear. She noted the data on the board. Here you can find a picture which represents a table with the sizes of the shoes as 4, 5, 3, 4, 3, 4, 5, 5, 4, etc. She then arranged the shoe sizes of the students in ascending order. 3, 3, 3, 3 times, 4, 4, 4, 9 times, and 5, 5, 5, 5 10 times, and 6, 6, 6, 6, 4 times, and 7. Figure it out. Question number 1. Help her to figure out the following. Part A. The largest shoe size in the class is dash. Part B. The smallest shoe size in the class is dash. Part C. There are dash students who wear shoe size 5. Part D. There are dash students who wear shoe sizes larger than 4. Question number 2. How did arranging the data in ascending order Help to answer these questions. Question number 3. Are there other ways to arrange the data? Page number 78. Question number 4. Write the names of a few trees you find around you. When you find a tree on the way from your home to school or while walking from one place to another place, record the data and fill in the given table. We have two columns here, one for tree, another one for number of trees. The first column, there are trees like people, name, etc. You can fill up the number of trees against these trees. 
पार्ट ए विच ट्री वॉज फाउंड इन द ग्रेटेस्ट नंबर पार्ट बी विच ट्री वॉज फाउंड इन द स्मॉलेस्ट नंबर पार्ट सी वर देर एनी टू ट्रीज फाउंड इन द सेम नंबर क्वेश्चन नंबर फाइव टेक अ ब्लैंक पीस ऑफ पेपर एंड पेस्ट एनी स्मॉल न्यूज आइटम फ्रॉम अ न्यूज पेपर ईच स्टूडेंट मे यूज अ डिफरेंट आर्टिकल नाउ प्रिपेयर अ टेबल ऑन द पीस ऑफ पेपर एज गिवेन बिलो काउंट द नंबर ऑफ ईच ऑफ द लेटर्स सी ई आई आर एंड एक्स इन द वर्ड्स ऑफ द न्यूज आर्टिकल एंड फिल इन द टेबल देर इज अ पिक्चर ऑफ अ टेबल हियर विच शोज लेटर सी देन ई आई आर एक्स एंड अनदर कॉलम विथ एनी अदर लेटर ऑफ योर चॉइस द सेकेंड रो रिप्रजेंट्स नंबर ऑफ टाइम्स फाउंड इन द न्यूज आइटम देर आर ब्लैंक्स टू बी फिल्ड अप बाई यू पार्ट ए द लेटर फाउंड द मोस्ट नंबर ऑफ टाइम्स इज डैश पार्ट बी द लेटर फाउंड द लीस्ट नंबर ऑफ टाइम्स इज डैश पार्ट सी लिस्ट द फाइव लेटर्स सी ई आई आर एक्स इन असेंडिंग ऑर्डर ऑफ फ्रीक्वेंसी नाउ कंपेयर द ऑर्डर ऑफ योर लिस्ट विद दैट ऑफ योर क्लासमेट्स इज योर ऑर्डर द सेम or nearly the same as theirs almost everyone is likely to get the order x c r i e why do you think this is the case page number 79 part d write the process you followed to complete this task part e discuss with your friends the processes they followed part f if you do this task with another news item what process would you follow teachers note provide more opportunities to collect and organize data ask students to guess what is the most popular color game toy school subject etc amongst the students in their classroom and then collect the data for it it can be a fun activity in which they also learn about their classmates discuss how they can organize the data in different ways each way having its own advantage and limitations for all these tasks and the task under figure it out discuss the task with the children and let them understand the task and then let them plan and present their research processes and conclusions in the class 4.2 pictographs pictographs are one visual and suggestive way to represent data without writing any numbers here is a picture which is given you may be familiar with it from previous classes there are two columns one representing modes of traveling and the second one represents number of students where one smiley is equal to one student in modes of traveling we have five rows in which private car public bus school bus cycle and walking are represented for private car there are four smileys for public bus there are five smileys for school bus there are 11 smileys for cycle there are three and for walking there are seven smileys represented here this picture helps you understand at a glance the different modes of travel used by students based on this picture answer the following questions page number 80 which mode of travel is used by the most number of students 
which mode of travel is used by the least number of students. A pictograph represents data through pictures of objects. It helps answer questions about data with just a quick glance. In the above pictograph, one unit or symbol, smiley, is used to represent one student. There are also other pictographs where one unit or symbol stands for many people or objects. Example, Nand Kishore collected responses from the children of his middle school in Berasia regarding how often they slept at least 9 hours during the night. He prepared a pictograph from the data. There are two columns given here in the picture. First is for response and second column represents number of children where one triangle is equal to 10 children. In responses, we have three rows here. First one representing always which has five triangles against it. For sometimes there are two and half triangles in front of it and for never there are four triangles. Answer the following questions using the pictograph. Question number one. What is the number of children who always slept at least nine hours at night? Question number two. How many children sometimes slept at least nine hours at night? Question number three. How many children always slept less than nine hours each night? Explain how you got your answer. Solutions for question number one. In the table, there are five pictures of triangles for always. Each picture of triangle represents 10 children. Therefore, five pictures indicate 5 into 10 that is equal to 50 children. Answer to question number 2. There are two complete pictures that is triangles. 2 into 10 is equal to 20 and a half picture that is half of 10 is equal to 5. We have a half triangle here. Therefore, the number of children who sleep at least 9 hours only sometimes is 20 plus 5 is equal to 25. Page number 81. Answer to question number 3. There are 4 complete pictures for never. Hence, 4 into 10 is equal to 40 children. Never sleep at least 9 hours in the night. That is, they always sleep less than 9 hours. Drawing a pictograph. One day, Lakhan Pal collected data on how many students were absent in each class. Here, there is a picture given in the form of a tabular column having 8 columns and 2 rows. First row represents classes from 1 to 8 and second row represents number of students. We have first class 3 students. For class 2, there are 5 students. For class 3, there are 4 students. For class 4, there are 2 students. For class 5, it shows 0. For class 6, it represents 1. For class 7, there are 5 students. And for class 8, there were 7 students who were absent. He created a pictograph to represent this data and decided to show one student as one smiley in the pictograph. There is a figure given here displaying number of students absent on the horizontal line and various classes on the vertical line. The above data has been represented in the form of pictograph. Meanwhile, his friends Zarina and Sangeeta collected data on how many students were present in each class. Here, there is a picture 
given of a tabular column in the form of two rows. In first row, there are classes from 1 to 8 and in the second row, there are students mentioned against their classes. For class 1, there are 30 students. For class 2, it represents 35 students. For class 3, there are 20. For class 4, 25. For class 5, it represents 30 number of students. For class 6, 25 students were present. For class 7, 30 students. And for class 8, it represents 20 students, those who are present. Page number 82. If they want to represent their data through a pictograph, where they also use one symbol of smiley for each student, as Lakhanpal did, what are the challenges they might face? Zarina made a plan to address this. Since there were many students, she decided to use one smiley to represent five students. She figured that would save time and space too. Here, a picture is given which represents number of students on horizontal line and classes 1 to 8 on the vertical line. And one smiley represents 5 students. Sangeeta decided to use one smiley to represent 10 students instead. Since she used one smiley to show 10 students, she had a problem in representing 25 students and 35 students in the pictograph. Then she realized she could use half of the smiley to show 5 students. Here there is a picture given which represents number of students on horizontal line and classes 1 to 8 in the vertical line to represent the above data. Page number 83. What could be the problems faced in preparing such a pictograph? If the total number of students present in a class is 33 or 27, pictographs are a nice visual and suggestive way to represent data. They represent data through pictures of objects. Pictographs can help answer questions and make inferences about data with just a quick glance. In the examples above, about favorite games, favorite colors, most common modes of conveyance, number of students absent, etc. By reading a pictograph, we can quickly understand the frequencies of the different categories. For example, cricket, hockey, etc. And the comparisons of these frequencies. In a pictograph, the categories can be arranged horizontally or vertically. For each category, simple pictures and symbols are then drawn in the designated columns or rows according to the frequency of that category. A scale or key. For example, one smiley is equal to one student or one smiley is equal to five students is added to show what each symbol or picture represents. Each symbol or picture can represent one unit or multiple units. It can be more challenging to prepare a pictograph when the amount of data is large or when the frequencies are not exact multiples of the scale or key. Figure it out. Question number one. The following pictograph shows the number of books borrowed by students in a week from the library of middle school Ginnori. Page number 84. Here there is a picture representing pictograph. The picture has two columns. First one representing days from Monday to Saturday and second column 
representing number of books borrowed on different days from Monday to Saturday. One symbol of book represents one book. On Monday, it represents number of books borrowed as five. On Tuesday, four books are representing the borrowed books. On Wednesday, two books are borrowed. On Thursday, no books are borrowed. On Friday, there are five books. And on Saturday, there are eight books. Part A. On which day were the minimum number of books borrowed? Part B. What was the total number of books borrowed during the week? Part C. On which day were the maximum number of books borrowed? What may be the possible reason? Question number 2. Magan Bhai sells kites at Jamnagar. Six shopkeepers from nearby villages come to purchase kites from him. The number of kites he sold to these six shopkeepers are given here. Here, there is a picture having two columns. First column is for shopkeepers and the second column is for number of kites sold to them. We have Chaman with 250 kites, Rani 300 kites, Ruksana 100 kites, Jasmeet 450 kites, Jethalal 250 kites, Poonam Bain 700 kites. Page number 85. Prepare a pictograph using the symbol kite to represent 100 kites. Answer the following questions. Part A. How many symbols represent the kites that Rani purchased? Part B. Who purchased the maximum number of kites? Part C. Who purchased more kites? Jasmeet? Or Chaman. Part D. Ruksana says Poonam Bain purchased more than double the number of kites that Rani purchased. Is she correct? Why? 4.3 bar graphs. Have you found graphs on TV or in a newspaper? Like pictographs, such bar graphs can help us to quickly understand and interpret information such as the highest value, the comparison of values of different categories, etc. However, when the amount of data is large, presenting it by a pictograph is not only time-consuming but at times difficult too. Let us see how data can be presented instead using a bar graph. We have a beautiful bar graph here in which the black color represents mammals, brown color represents reptiles, purple color represents birds and green color represents insects. Yellow color represents amphibians, orange color represents mollusks that is snails, blue color represents fish and gray color represents others. On the horizontal line, we have number of years represented as 2007, 2010, 2013, 2016, 2019 and 2022. On the vertical line, we have marks as 0, 5000, 10,000, 15,000, 20,000. The picture also gives details of the source from where it is taken. Let's take the data collected by Lakhan Pal earlier regarding the number of students absent on one day in each class. The picture here has eight columns and two rows. First row representing class and the second row representing number of students. In class 1, number of students absent were 3. In class 2, 5. In class 3, 4. In class 4, 2. In class 5, 0. In class 6, 1. In class 7, 5. And in class 8, 7. Page number 86. He presented the same data using a bar graph. 
Here, one unit length represents one student. On the horizontal line, the classes are represented from class 1 to class 8. And on the vertical line, number of students are represented from 0 to 8. Teachers note. If the students have not noticed, please point out the equally spaced horizontal lines. Explain that this means that each pair of consecutive numbers on the left has the same gap. Answer the following questions using the bar graph. Question number 1. In class 2, dash students were absent that day. Question number 2. In which class were the maximum number of students absent? Dash. Question number 3. Which class had full attendance that day? Dash. When marking bar graphs, bars of uniform width can be drawn horizontally or vertically with equal spacing between them. Then the length or height of each bar represents the given number. Page number 87. As we found in pictographs, we can use a scale or key when the frequencies are larger. Let us explore an example of vehicular traffic at a busy road crossing in Delhi, which was studied by the traffic police on a particular day. The number of vehicles passing through the crossing each hour from 6 a.m. to 12 noon is represented in the bar graph. One unit of length stands for 100 vehicles. You can find a picture of a horizontal bar graph given here. On horizontal line, number of vehicles are represented and on vertical line, the time intervals are represented. The number of vehicles from 100 to 1200, that is 100, 200, 300, 400, 500, 600, 700, 800, 900, 1000, 1100 and 1200. On the vertical line, there are time intervals from 6 to 7, 7 to 8, 8 to 9, 9 to 10, 10 to 11 and 11 to 12. We can find that the maximum traffic at the crossing is represented by the longest bar, that is, for the time interval 7 to 8 am. The bar graph represents that 1200 vehicles passed through the crossing at that time. The second longest bar is for 8 to 9 am. During that time, 1000 vehicles pass through the crossing. Similarly, the minimum traffic is represented by the smallest bar, that is, the bar for the time interval 6 to 7 am. During that time, only about 150 vehicles pass through the crossing. The second smallest bar is that from the time interval 11 am to 12 noon, when about 600 vehicles pass through the crossing. The total number of cars passing through the crossing during the 2 hour interval 8 am to 10 am are represented by the bar graph is about 1000 plus 800 that is equal to 1800 vehicles. Page number 88. Figure it out. Question number 1. How many total cars pass through the crossing between 6 am and noon? Question number 2. Why do you think so little traffic occurred during the hour of 6 to 7 am as compared to the other hours from 7 am to noon? Question number 3. Why do you think the traffic was the heaviest between 7 and 8 am? Question number 4. Why do you think the traffic was lesser and lesser each hour? after 8 a.m. all the way until noon. We have an example. Here, a picture of bar graph is given. It represents years on the horizontal line and population of India 
encroach on the vertical line. On the horizontal line, we have years as 1951, 1961, 1971, 1981, 1991 and 2001. Population of India encroach is represented along the vertical line as 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100 and 110 crores. This bar graph represents the population of India in each decade over a period of 50 years. The numbers are expressed in crores. If you were to take one unit length to represent one person, Drawing the bars will be difficult. Page number 89. Therefore, we choose the scale so that one unit represents 10 crores. The bar graph for this choice is represented in the figure. So, a bar of length 5 units represents 50 crores and of 8 units represents 80 crores. On the basis of this bar graph, what may be a few questions you may ask your friends? How much did the population of India increase over 50 years? How much did the population increase in each decade? 4.4 Drawing a bar graph In a previous example, Sri Nilesh prepared a frequency table representing the sweet preferences of the students in his class. Let's try to prepare a bar graph to present his data. There is a figure of tabular columns here. The figure has two columns and five rows. In the first column, we have sweets, jalebi, gulab jamun, gunjia, barfi and rasgulla. Number of students are Mentioned against their sweets. Jalebi has 6 number of students. Gulab Jamun has 9. Gunjia has 13 students. And Barfi is preferred by 3 students. Rasgulla by 7 students. First tip. We draw a horizontal line and a vertical line. On the horizontal line, we will write the name of each of the sweets equally spaced from which the bars will rise in accordance with their frequencies and on the vertical line we will write the frequencies representing the number of students. Second step, we must choose a scale. That means we must decide how many students will be represented by a unit length of a bar so that it fits nicely on our paper. Here, we will take one unit length to represent one student. Step 3. For Jalebi, we therefore need to draw a bar having a height of 6 units, which is the frequency of the sweet Jalebi. And similarly, for the other sweets, we have to draw bars as high as their frequencies. Page number 90. Fourth step. We therefore get a bar graph as represented here. We have different sweets represented on the horizontal line as Jalebi, Gulab Jamun, Gunjia, Barfi and Rasgulla. And on the vertical line, we have number of students from 0 to 14. Different bars represent the number of students preferring the sweets. When the frequencies are larger and we cannot use the scale of one unit length is equal to one number, that is frequency, we need to choose a different scale like we did in the case of pictographs. Example, the number of runs scored by Smriti in each of the eight matches are given in the table here. We have two columns in which we have two rows and eight columns here. First row represents match and the second row represents runs. 
for match 1 there are 80 runs represented for match 2 50 runs match 3 10 runs match 4 100 runs match 5 90 runs match 6 0 runs match 7 90 runs and match 8 represents 50 runs in this example the minimum score is 0 and the maximum score is 100 using a scale of one unit length is equal to one run would mean that we have to go all the way from 0 to 100 runs in steps of one this would be unnecessarily tedious instead let us use a scale where one unit length is equal to 10 runs we mark the scale on the vertical line and draw the bars according to the scores in each match we get the bar graph represented in the given data page number 91 there is a picture of bar graph given here which represents run scored by Smriti on the horizontal line we have representation of all the eight matches here and on the vertical line different runs from 0 to 100 various bars represent the number of runs for match 1 it represents 80 runs for match 2 50 runs for match 3 there are 10 runs and for match 4 there are 100 runs for match 5 it represents 90 runs and for match 6 there's no bar because there are 0 runs for match 7 there are 90 runs and for match 8 it represents 50 runs the following table represents the monthly expenditure of Imran's family on various items here we find a picture which represents a tabular column with two columns and six rows representing items in the first column and expenditure in the second column against the items first is house rent expenditure is 3000 rupees food 3400 rupees education 800 rupees electricity 400 rupees transport 600 rupees miscellaneous 1200 rupees to represent this data in the form of a bar graph here are the steps first one draw two perpendicular lines one horizontal and one vertical second along the horizontal line mark the items with equal spacing between them and mark the corresponding expenditure along the vertical line page number 92 third step take bars of the same width keeping a uniform gap between them fourth step choose a suitable scale along the vertical line let one unit length be equal to 200 rupees and then mark and write the corresponding values 200 rupees 400 rupees etc representing each unit length finally calculate the heights of the bars for various items as given here for house rent we have 3000 divided by 200 that is equal to 15 units for food 3400 divided by 200 is equal to 17 units for education 800 divided by 200 is equal to 4 units for electricity 400 divided by 200 is equal to 2 units for transport 600 divided by 200 is equal to 3 units for miscellaneous 1200 divided by 200 is equal to 6 units here is the bar graph that we obtain based on the above steps the picture of a bar graph is here which represents items on the horizontal line and expenditure in rupees on the vertical line page number 93 use the bar graph to answer the following questions 
क्वेश्चन नंबर वन ऑन विच आइटम डज इमरान फैमिली स्पेंड द मोस्ट एंड द सेकेंड मोस्ट क्वेश्चन नंबर टू इज द कॉस्ट ऑफ इलेक्ट्रिसिटी अबाउट वन हाफ द कॉस्ट ऑफ एजुकेशन क्वेश्चन नंबर थ्री इज द कॉस्ट ऑफ एजुकेशन लेस दैन वन फोर्थ द कॉस्ट ऑफ फूड फिगर इट आउट सामंथा विजिटेड अ टी गार्डन एंड कलेक्टेड डेटा ऑफ द इंसेक्ट्स एंड क्रिटर्स शी सॉ देर हियर इज द डाटा शी कलेक्टेड वी हैव माइट्स एज सिक्स कैटेपिलर्स एज टेन बीटल्स एज फाइव बटरफ्लाइज थ्री and grasshoppers too help her prepare a bar graph representing this data question number 2 puja collected data on the number of tickets sold at the bhopal railway station for a few different cities of madhya pradesh over a 2 hour period we have a picture of a table here in which two rows are there first one represent city and the second row number of tickets vidisha city has 24 tickets jabalpur 20 sioni 16 indore 28 and for sagar it is 16 tickets she used this data and prepared a bar graph on the board to discuss the data with her students but someone erased a portion of the graph page number 94 we can find a picture of the bar graph represented here as different cities on the horizontal axis and number of tickets on the vertical axis for vidisha jabalpur sioni and indore we have bars represented for sagar bar is erased you have to try to make the bar graph there part a write the number of tickets sold for vidisha above the bar part b write the number of tickets sold for jabalpur above the bar part c the bar for vidisha is 6 unit lengths and the bar for jabalpur is 5 unit lengths what is the scale for this graph part d draw the correct bar for sagar part e add the scale of the bar graph by placing the correct numbers on the vertical axis part f are the bars for sioni and indore correct in this graph if not draw the correct bars question number 3 Chinu listed the various means of transport that passed across the road in front of his house from 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. We have a data here as bike, car, bus, auto rickshaw, bicycle, bullock cart, auto rickshaw, scooter and so on. Page number 95, part A. Prepare a frequency distribution table for the data part b which means of transport was used the most part c if you were there to collect this data how could you do it write the steps or process question number 4 roll a die 30 times and record the number you obtain each time prepare a frequency distribution table using tally marks find the number that appeared part a minimum number of times part b the maximum number of times part c find numbers that appeared an equal number of times question number 5 faiz prepared a frequency distribution table of data on the number of wickets taken by jaspreet bumra in his last 30 matches we have two columns here with wickets taken and number of matches played for 0 number of matches played is 2 for 
it is 4. For 2 wickets taken, number of matches is 6. For 3, it is 8. For 4 wickets, it is number of matches played are 3. For 5, number of matches played 5. And for wickets taken 6, it is number of matches showing 1. And for 7, number of matches played is 1. Part A. What information is this table giving? Part B. What may be the title of this table? Part C. What caught your attention in this table? Part D. In how many matches has Bumrah taken 4 wickets? Page number 96. Part E. Mayang says, If we want to know the total number of wickets, he has taken in his last 30 matches, we have to add the numbers 0, 1, 2, 3, etc. up to 7. Can Mayank get the total number of wickets taken in this way? Why? Part F. How would you correctly figure out the total number of wickets taken by Bumrah in his Last 30 matches using this table. Question number 6. The following pictograph represents the number of tractors in 5 different villages. We have 2 columns here. One representing villages. The other representing number of tractors. One tractor is used as a symbol here. For village A, we have 6 tractors. For village B, there are 5 tractors represented. For village C, there are 8 tractors. And for village D, we have 3 tractors. And for village E, there are 6 tractors. Observe the pictograph and answer the following questions. Part A. Which village has the smallest number of tractors? Part B. Which village has the most tractors? Part C. How many more tractors does village C have than village B? Part D. Komal says village D has half the number of tractors as village E. Is she right? Page number 97. Question number 7. The number of girl students in each class of a school is depicted by the pictograph. We have a pictograph here with classes and number of girl students represented. Here symbol of a girl is equal to 4 girls. For class 1, we have 6 girls as symbols here. For class 2, we have 4 and half symbols to represent girl students. For class 3, we have 5 symbols of girls. For class 4, we have 3 and half symbols. For class 5, we have 2 and half symbols of girls. For class 6, we have 4 girls symbols here. And for class 7, we have 3 symbols for girl students. And for class 8, we have 1 and half symbol representing girl students. Observe this pictograph and answer the following questions. Part A. Which class has the least number of girl students? Part B. What is the difference between the number of girls in classes 5 and 6? Part C. If two more girls were admitted in class 2, how would the graph change? Part D. How many girls are there in class 7? Page number 98. Question number 8. Mudhol hounds, a type of breed of Indian dogs, are largely found in North Karnataka's Bagalkote and Vijaypura districts. The government took an initiative to protect this breed by providing support to those who adopted these dogs. Due to this initiative, the number of these dogs increased. The number of mudhol dogs 
in six villages of Karnataka are as follows. Village A has 18. Village B, 36. Village C, 12. Village D, 48. Village E, 18. And Village F has 24. Prepare a pictograph and answer the following questions. Part A. What will be a useful scale or key to draw this pictograph? Part B. How many symbols will you use to represent the dogs in village B? Part C. Kamini said that the number of these dogs in village B and village D together will be more than the number of these dogs in the other four villages. Is she right? Give reason for your response. Question number 9. A survey of 120 school students was conducted to find out which activity they preferred to do in their free time. We have two columns here, one representing preferred activity and the second one representing number of students. For playing, we have number of students as 45, reading storybooks, number of students are 30, watching TV, 20 students, listening to music, 10 students, painting, 15 students. Draw a bar graph to illustrate the above data, taking the scale of one unit length is equal to 5 students. Which activity is preferred by most students other than playing? Page number 99. Question number 10. Students and teachers of a primary school decided to plant tree saplings in the school campus and in the surrounding village during the first week of July. Details of the saplings they planted are given here in the form of bar graph. We have on the horizontal line Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday and Sunday represented here. And on the vertical line, number of saplings planted are mentioned. 0, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 and 80. On the basis of this, we have to answer the questions. Part A. The total number of saplings planted on Wednesday and Thursday is dash. Part B. The total number of saplings planted during the whole week is dash. Part C. The greatest number of saplings were planted on dash. And the least number of saplings were planted on dash. Why do you think that is the case? Why were more saplings planted on certain days of the week and less on others? Can you think of possible explanations or reasons? How could you try and figure out whether your explanations are correct. Question number 11. The number of tigers in India went down drastically between 1900 and 1970. Project Tiger was launched in 1973 to track and protect the tigers in India. Starting in 2006, the exact number of tigers in India was tracked. Shah Gupta and Divya looked up information about the number of tigers in India between 2006 and 2022 in four-year intervals. They prepared a frequency table for this data and a bar graph to represent this data. But there are a few mistakes in the graph. Can you find those mistakes and fix them? Page number 100 we can find a tabular column represented as year and number of tigers in two columns. In the year 2006, it represents 1400 tigers. In 2010, 1700 tigers. In 2014, 2200 tigers. In 2018, 3000 tigers. And 2022, there are 3,700 tigers. 
the data given in the table is represented with the help of a bar graph besides this table like pictographs bar graphs give a nice visual way to represent data they represent data through equally spaced bars each of equal width where the lengths or heights give frequencies of the different categories each category is represented by a bar where the length or height depicts the corresponding frequency for example cost or quantity for example runs the bars have uniform spaces between them to indicate that they are free standing and represent equal categories the bars help in interpreting data much faster than a frequency table by reading a bar graph we can compare frequencies of different categories at a glance we must decide the scale for example one unit length is equal to one student or one unit length is equal to 200 rupees for a bar graph on the basis of the data including the minimum and maximum frequencies so that the resulting bar graph fits nicely and looks visually appealing on the paper or poster we are preparing the markings of the unit lengths as per the scale must start from zero teachers note the main focus of this chapter is to learn how to handle data to find answers to specific questions or inquiries to test hypotheses or to take specific decisions this should be kept in mind when providing practice opportunities to collect organize and analyze data page number 101 4.5 artistic and aesthetic considerations in addition to the steps described in previous sections there are also some other more artistic and aesthetic aspects one can consider when preparing visual presentations of data to make them more interesting and effective first when making a visual presentation of data such as a pictograph or bar graph it is important to make it fit in the intended space this can be controlled for example by choosing the scale appropriately as we have seen earlier it is also desirable to make the data presentation visually appealing and easy to understand so that the intended audience appreciates the information being conveyed let us consider for example here is a table naming the tallest mountain on each continent along with the height of each mountain in meters the tabular column representing continent tallest mountain and height are expressed in this manner asia the tallest mountain everest has a height of 8848 meters south africa aconcagua 6962 meters north america denali 6194 meters africa kilimanjaro 5895 meters europe elbrus 5642 meters antarctica vinson massif 4892 meters australia cosquin zico 2228 meters how much taller is mount everest than mount cosquin zico are mount denali and mount kilimanjaro very different in height this is not so easy to quickly discern from the large table of numbers as we have seen earlier we can convert the table of numbers into a bar graph 
as shown on the right. Here, each value is drawn as a horizontal box. These are longer or shorter depending on the number they represent. This makes it easier to compare the heights of all these mountains at a glance. Page number 102. There is a picture of the bar graph representing the given data about Asia having the Everest mountain and South America, Akongua, North America, Denali, Africa, Kilimanjaro, Europe, Elbrus, Antarctica, Vincent Massif, Australia, Cosquins Gecko. However, since the boxes represent heights, it is better and more visually appealing to rotate the picture so that the boxes grow upward vertically from the ground like mountains. A bar graph with vertical bars is also called a column graph. Columns are the pillars you find in a building that hold up the roof. Below is a column graph for our table of tallest mountains. Here we have a column graph for our table of tallest mountains. From this column graph, it becomes easier to compare and visualize the heights of the mountains. The same data has been shown in the form of a column graph. Page number 103. In general, it is more intuitive, suggestive and visually appealing to represent heights that are measured upwards from the ground using bar graphs that have vertical bars or columns. Similarly, lengths that are parallel to the ground, for example, distances between location on earth are usually best represented using bar graphs with horizontal arcs. Figure it out. If you wanted to visually represent the data of the heights of the tallest persons in each class in your school, would you use a graph with vertical bars or horizontal bars? Why? Question number two. If you were making a table of the longest rivers on each continent and their lengths, would you prefer to use a bar graph with vertical bars or with horizontal bars? Why? Try finding out this information and then make the corresponding table and bar graph. Which continents have the longest rivers? Infographics When data visualizations such as bar graphs are further beautified, with more extensive artistic and visual imagery, they are called information graphics or infographics for short. The aim of infographics is to make use of attention attracting and engaging visuals to communicate information even more clearly and quickly in a visually pleasing way. As an example of how Infographics can be used to communicate data even more suggestively. Let's go back to the table above listing the tallest mountain on each continent. We drew a bar graph with vertical bars, that is columns, rather than horizontal bars to be more indicative of mountains. But instead of rectangles, we could use triangles which look a bit more like mountains and we can add a splash of color as well. Here is the result. Page number 104. Here you find a picture of the given data in the form of tables representing different mountains with their heights. We have Everest with height 8,848 meters and Ekongua 6,962 meters which is in South America and Denali 
6,194 meters in North America, Kilimanjaro with 5,895 meters in Africa, Elberus 5,642 meters in Europe, then Vincent Massif 4,892 meters in Antarctica, and Kosciuszko. 2228 meters in australia while this infographic might look more appealing and suggestive at first glance it does have some issues the goal of our bar graph earlier was to represent the heights of various mountains using bars of the appropriate heights but the same widths the purpose of using the same widths was to make it clear that we are only comparing heights however in this infographic the taller triangles are also wider are taller mountains always wider the infographic is implying additional information that may be misleading and may or may not be correct sometimes going for more appealing pictures can also accidentally mislead taking this idea further and to make the picture even more visually stimulating and suggestive we can further change the shapes of the mountains to make them look even more like mountains and add other details while attempting to preserve the heights for example we can create an imaginary mountain range that contains all these mountains is the infographic given here better than the column graph with rectangular columns of equal width the mountains look more realistic but is the picture accurate for example everest appears to be twice as tall as elberus page number 105 we have a picture of the seven highest peak on the seven continents given here with their heights displayed what is 5642 into 2 while preparing visually appealing presentations of data we also need to be careful that the pictures we draw do not mislead us about the facts in general it is important to be careful when making or reading infographics so that we do not mislead our intended audiences and we ourselves are not misled summary facts numbers measures observations and other descriptions of things that convey information about those things is called data data can be organized in a tabular form using tally marks for easy analysis and interpretation frequencies are the counts of the occurrences of values measures or observations page 106 pictographs represent data in the form of pictures or objects or parts of objects each picture represents a frequency which can be one or more than one this is called the scale and it must be specified bar graphs have bars of uniform width the length or height that indicates the total frequency of occurrence the scale that is used to convert length or height to frequency again must be specified choosing the appropriate scale for a pictograph or bar graph is important to accurately and effectively convey the desired information or data and to also make it visually appealing other aspects of a graph also contribute to its effectiveness and visual appeal such as how colors are used what accompanying pictures are drawn and whether the bars are horizontal or vertical these aspects correspond to the artistic and aesthetic side of data handling 
and presentation. However, making visual representations of data too fancy can also sometimes be misleading. By reading pictographs and bar graphs accurately, we can quickly understand and make inferences about the data presented. Chapter 4 is over. Ganit Prakash, you were just listening to this audiobook, textbook of mathematics for grade 6. Narration, Swarnlata. Academic Coordinator, Dr. Prakash Vadigar. Technical Coordination, Bati Langlingdo. Sound Recordist, Vikas Sangwan. Assistance in Production, Chetana Sharma. Directed and produced by Vimlesh Chaudhary. This audiobook is presented to you by CIET and CERT, New Delhi, India.